Welcome to another video of Warp PLS video series. In this video, we will talk about how to view and interpret results in Warp PLS. So we are going to look at a variety of results, starting from the simple uh, results like the sample size, uh, the number of items and the variables used. Then uh, we'll also talk about the correlation matrix, We'll talk about the coefficients, the beta coefficients. We will talk about uh, the discriminant validity. We'll talk about the reliability. We will also talk about the model fitness and HTMT and other important tests uh, that we can use uh, in our thesis or in our research report while we are using the Ward PLS. So let's just start. And assume that we have already performed our SAM analysis. Uh, if you have not seen our other videos, you can go back and watch the videos in which we have learned about how to perform these SAM analysis. Uh, once we have performed these analysis, some of the results can be seen here. For example, the path of uh, IV to DV can be seen here, and then IV to this DV can be seen here, and then R square values are here and then R square values are here. But these are not all the results that we are interested in. So let's just go step by step and see that what all results can we see uh, about the SAM analysis. So we'll start with uh, the view window. And here are number of options that we can see. And all of them provide us with the results. So some of the results we are going to find in the view tab and then some of the results we will be finding in the main uh, window in the explore part. So let's just first talk about uh, our view window analysis and the moment you're going to click view the first thing is the general results. So if you go to these general results you are going to look at these results with that you're using version 7 of WAR PLS, then some of the things which are calculated here. And the best thing about this WAR PLS is that it, it gives you the threshold value of all the uh, values here. So then we are going to have uh, the sample size and the general model uh, estimate and the sample size is here that we're using 376 sample size. The number of latent variables are four and the number of indicators, which means the number of items are 35, and number of iterations uh, to obtain estimate is six. So these are some of the uh, information that is given in the uh, general uh, tab. Now, let's just move to the other tab, which is view path coefficients and p-values. So this window actually gives us the results of the path that we have used in our SAM model. So if you can just look at uh, these paths, which is uh, 0.39 from LO to KC, LO to KC is given here. And their corresponding p-values are here. The same way, uh, the relationship between KC and innovation can be seen here. The innovation and firm performance can be seen here. And then LO and firm performance can be seen here. So these are, uh, some of the betas that we can uh, see in our SEM analysis, but at the same time, we can have a table view. Now, in order to understand the validity and reliability of the uh, model and the variable, we need to go to this view, and then we'll go to this view, indicator loadings and cross loadings. So let's just go to this uh, combined loading. And here you will have to see uh, and read about the loadings of uh, your variables. So how do we actually look at uh, this table? We have to look at this table from here. First of all, we need to see that LO, which is the learning organization, should be loading on its own items and the value should be above 0.5. But at the same time, we also need to look at these cross loadings, which means the same items when they are loading on the other variables 
than when they are loading uh, on their own items. So how do we differentiate? We need to make uh, two things clear here. One, that all the loadings in the brackets should be above 0.5. But at the same time, all the cross loadings on the other variables should be less than 0.5, which is the case. So in the second variable, we can uh, see uh, here that all the loadings except the first one is above 0.5. The first one is 0.383. So this is a problem. And at the same time, you can see that it is also cross loading at 0.679, which is uh, above 0.5. So this item of KC, which is knowledge creation, can give us a problem which we may remove in our uh, SEM analysis. And then if you just look at the third variable, these are the values. Again, the first item is not right because it is uh, loading less than 0.5 here in its own items, but it is loading uh, cross loading 0.847, which is above 0.5. So again, we have a problem with this first item of innovation. And then the last one looks fine because all the items are loading uh, at more than 0.5 level and all the cross loadings are less than 0.5 level. So we can say that our uh, validity related to our loadings is fine. Another thing that we uh, do here is that we go to this view and we go to this view latent variable coefficients. Now, this is going to give us some of the very, very important values that we require in order to understand our uh, validity and reliability. So starting from uh, this composite reliability, this is uh, usually known as CR, composite reliability, and it is showing us that it has a value which is above 0.9 for almost uh, all of our variables. Now, the threshold is that it should be above 0 0.5. And then we have this Cronbach alpha, which is used for our reliability analysis. And all of the values are above 0.9, which is very good. And the threshold is that the values should be above 0 0.7. Then another very important measure is the AVE values, average variance extracted. So this should be above 0.5 and in all of our cases it is above 0.5. So this is also fine. And then we have a VIF value which is variance inflation factor value. Now this value is 1.2, 1.3, 1.8, 1.4. The threshold for this value is that it should be less than 5. Some people say it should be less than 10. But to be uh, very accurate, it should be less than 3.3. So we are also fine with this one. Then we have some additional uh, things like skewness value, the kurtosis value. The thresholds are different for different authors, but the main way to understand is that it should be uh, close to zero or if you want to be uh, a little uh, threshold oriented then skewness should be between minus one and plus one and kurtosis can be between minus three and plus three but it totally depends what kind of data you have and uh, what uh, author you're following in terms of normality then we have some more tests like uh, jog -Bara test for normality and it is showing that some of the variables are not normal, but others are normal. So you can also have uh, this test here. And then we can also go to the, these histograms. So histogram of LO can be seen here. And then another can be seen here. And the same way we can also see the histogram and you can always save these histograms in uh, JPG file. This is about uh, the 
uh, discriminant and uh, conversion validity but we have some more tests that are going to help us in understanding uh, our uh, validity for example if you just go to this explore and then if you look at these explore additional coefficient in indices and here you have to go to this discriminant validity coefficients and here we are going to get a lot many results which are very important for example uh, this is the correlation squared AVEs among different latent variables but here we are actually interested in the same result that we just saw and again we can see that our cross loadings and loadings are fine except this and uh, this one more variable which is the innovation so these two are not fine but the rest of them are fine we've already seen it now full collinearity vif we've seen it it is also fine one of the most important tests uh, that is currently being used for uh, discriminant validity is the htmt ratios HTMT is known as uh, heterotrait monotrait ratios of correlations. Now, the best thing about WAR PLS is that it will give you the threshold values. So, if you look at this, it is saying that if it is less than 0 0.9, it is good. But if it is less than 0 0.85, it is the best. So, we'll have to look at these values, and these values are all uh, less than 0 .0, uh, 0.85 which is completely fine with us. And then we have the p-values, which are all significant, another indicator. And then at the end, we will also have this uh, HTMT ratio intervals. Interval means that lower level confidence interval and upper level confidence interval. So how can we see significant value? That is uh, actually indicated by looking at these two values and then seeing that zero does not lie between these two values, the range of these two values, or uh, you can say that there is no one between the range of these two values. So if you just take a zero in the middle, plus one here and minus one here, these two values are falling towards the right side of the zero which means zero does not fall within their range. So these are uh, lower level and upper level confidence intervals. So this is how you actually analyze that uh, your HTMT ratios are fine and your discriminant validity is also fine. Some more results that can be seen from this view window is uh, that if you want to see the correlation among indicators. So this is going to show you all the correlation among all the indicators that you have used in your model. Another indicator of uh, the uh, validity can be seen by going to this view and going to the correlation among latent variables and click here and here you can see this table. But one thing that we have to note down here is that they have given us a value of AVE which is shown in diagonal within the brackets. So how do we have to interpret it? For the interpretation, we will be looking at this side and we will have to see that the value of our AVE, which is there in the bracket, should be greater than all the rest of the values within that column and which is fine again in this column you'll have to see the that this value is above all the rest of the values and the same here the same here and when you look at these uh, p values these are also significant so this is another indicator of uh, your uh, validity so let's just uh, go back and see what else can we see here in our uh, results you can also look at these indirect and total effects. We have already talked about these results in one of our videos of mediation. But this is how you will be actually looking at the results, which is saying that uh, indirect effect for path. So let's just uh, reduce it and look at the results and interpret it.
So this is showing us results of two paths. Here, one path is the LO, KC and innovation. LO, KC and innovation. So these are the indirect effects. And then another path is the KC, innovation and FP, which is here, KC, innovation and FP. So these are the indirect results and their uh, corresponding values of uh, uh, P values are here. And then we have their effect size here. And then we have another result with the three segments, which is saying that LO, KC, innovation and fund performance has this much of indirect effect, which means this is a result of LO, KC, innovation and FP path. And then you can also look at their corresponding uh, significant values, which is fine. And then you can also look at their uh, standard errors and then all of these things. We have talked about uh, these results in one of our videos of sequential mediation and simple mediation analysis. So you can always go back to those videos and uh, see how uh, we interpret these results. Okay, so how to look for our uh, model fit indices. For that, once you have run your model, you'll go back to this main window. And here we are going to go to this explore window and explore additional coefficients and indices. And here you will have to uh, make sure that you are on this side and it is saying that model fit and um, quality indices. And again, one of the best things about Warp PLS is that it gives you your values of the model of your SAM analysis. And at the same time, it gives you the threshold values. For example, uh, the classic indices cover the average path coefficient, which is 0 0.354 and it is uh, significant, which is fine. Average R squared is fine, it is significant. Then average adjusted R squared is also fine. And here, if you look at these VIF values of your model, it is saying it is 1.162, but at the same time, it is saying that if they are less than 3.3, it is ideal. So it is less than 3.3. Uh, then we have the full collinearity that is 1.466, and it is also less than 0.33. Then we have the GOF values which uh, is equal to 0 0.380 and the thresholds are that it should be greater than 0 0.1 if it uh, if it is greater than 0 0.1 we'll consider it a small value for medium uh, 0 0.25 and for large uh, it should be greater than 0 0.38 and in our case it is uh, showing uh, large values and then we have some SPR that is 0 0.750 acceptable if it is above 0.7 ideal if it is one we have this uh, in the acceptable range and then r squared correlations are saying that 0 0.982 ideally they should be one but they are acceptable if, if they are uh, more than 0 0.9 which is fine and then we have uh, this value which is equal to one and it is saying that it should be greater than 0 0.7 and then these values and some of the other uh, additional indices are here which is standardized root mean square residual which is 0 0.124 now this should have been uh, less than 0 0.1 so that means there's a problem uh, here but the rest of the values for example smar 0 0.075 it should be less than or equal to 0 0.1 which is fine and then we have the uh, standard chi-square and this is also significant standardized threshold difference count ratio which is 0 0.936 it should be greater than 0 0.7 and we are fine with this one 0 0.678 it should be now here again we have some problem so this is how this table is going to give you the model fitness of uh, your results so this is how you can uh, view the results in Warp PLS. In uh, some more videos, we will talk about some other important things about
this software. Thank you very much.